A330neo vs A350. Both are the newest generation of twins from Airbus. In 2006, with the final launch of A350XWB, initial plans for an upgraded A330 with new wings, horizontal stabilizer, engines in response to 787 were dropped. However, once it became clear A350 was competing more in terms of size to 777, Airbus dropped the smallest Dash 800. Pushed by customer demand to re-engine A330s just like the A320, with the A320neo at the time being a huge success, Airbus launched the A330neo in 2014. Airbus said the A330neo would be much better than an A350-800 in competing at the lower end of the long-haul wide-body market. But between the deceased A350-800 and new A330-900neo, the two closest versions which competes better with the main competitor, the 787-9. Well, before we find out if you're new here, a warm welcome and do stay tuned for more great videos on the way. By the way, a warm welcome to One Sky. You're watching the Airplane Productions, but Airplane Productions is only half the story. For more great exclusive content, be sure to also subscribe to Aviation Flyer linked in the description below for more great plane spotting, vlogs and more. Be sure to follow Aviation Flyer 350 on Instagram, also linked in the description below as well for more great photos. Do also follow the new One Sky Network Spotify channel for some great audio tidbits about aviation. One of the rare few aviation Spotify channels. A330-900 with a new 251-ton takeoff weight flies 7,200 nautical miles carrying 306 passengers in a two-class layout. The A350-800 was intended to carry 273 class to 8,300 nautical miles. The 787-9 carries around 290 passengers to class to a distance of 7,530 nautical miles. All in all, the A330-900 is indeed a closer competitor in terms of specification to the 787-9. Engines all use the latest generation of engines. High bypasses made of titanium for Rolls Royce engines, these burn around 12% less fuel. The A330 900 uses Rolls Royce Trent 7000, each with 72,800 pounds of power. While the 787 9 uses Rolls Royce Trent 1000 TEN, similar to Trent 7000 without the bleed air system, and each produces 71,000 pounds of thrust. The aircraft is also available with GE NX-1B. Less thrust of 787 means lower landing and takeoff charges at airports. The higher thrust of Trent XWB proposed to power the A350-800 would increase the operational costs landing takeoff charges. Given each Trent XWB proposed to power the Dash 800 produces 74,000 pounds of thrust. Efficiency, A330-900 burns 5.94 kg per kilometer and 2.48 liters per 100 km in fuel burn per seat in a typical two-class hop. The 787-9 burns 5.85 kg per kilometer in terms of fuel burn per trip and 2.49 liters per 100 km in the same two class layouts over the same route. So, the A330-900 burns around 2-3% more fuel burn per trip, 4% less per passenger. Expected given it carries 6-10 to 10 more passengers, though it's less efficient with its older design less optimized for longer routes.
the A350-800 wouldn't have stood a chance, with a couple percentage points off A350-900, which already burns around 5-7% to more fuel per trip, and given the added seats Dash 900 has would be taken away, the fuel burn per seat could be around 10-12% to higher in my calculations against the 77-9. Thus, there's no doubt the A330-900 is more efficient than A350-800. Cabins. The A330neo and A350-800 will both feature airspace, though A350 would have benefited from the larger overhead bins, larger windows, higher ceilings, lowest cabin altitude with higher cabin pressure, the quietest cabin, and a wide cabin taking 9 abreast with 18-inch seats compared to 8 abreast typical of A330neo for 18-inch seats. Still, the A330neo was updated with many of the same great features. and has a quarter cabin than 787-9, wider seats in economy for typical configuration, the same latest IFE, Wi-Fi and mood lighting with welcome effect. While 787-9 might have more cramped 17-inch economy seats, I would still say it's a nicer cabin, with higher ceilings and larger windows which dim at a touch of a button. This just makes it feel more spacious. It also benefits from the same better air as A350, and for longer flights, these added bonuses make the 787-9 a more comfortable aircraft. Advantages and disadvantages. The A330neo is more efficient given it's the most optimized A330 yet. It also has the same type ratings, meaning less transition times for pilots and crew as other A330s. For the mature A330 program means Airbus can offer steeper discounts with A330 Neo. This makes it a more justifiable aircraft against the all new 787. However, it's less efficient than 787 and A350-800 on the longest routes due to its heavier aluminum structure. The A350-800 may outfly A330-900 and offer the same better air plus slightly more cargo, but it would be a lot more expensive, have excessive range and expense of efficiency, and is simply less efficient. The issue is that the Dash 800 is a simple shrink with lower weights than the Dash 900, therefore a de-optimized A350 rather than an upgraded A330. Its fewer seats means higher fuel burn per seat than the Dash 900, nowhere near efficient enough to compete with 787. The A330-900 received 271 orders, beating out the A350-800 record of 182 orders before airlines switched to the larger, more optimized Dash 900. So then, is the A330neo a better competitor against 787 than the A350-800? Well, there is no doubt here, yes. It's cheaper, it's more efficient, and when competing with one of the best white bodies in the industry, these are key selling points which are essential to win the votes of airlines.